I think recording has started. Yes. So, uh, good evening, everyone. We'll be uh, discussing about case error discussions in metastatic carcinoma prostate. So, what is the agenda for the day? Are you able to see the slides? Is it visible? Okay, fine. So, agenda for the day is management of PSA only recurrence, management of metastatic hormone sensitive cancer, management of castrate resistant prostate cancer, management of metastatic castrate resistant prostate cancer. Okay. So, let's go into management of PSA only recurrence. So, it's like this. So, case scenario based one. A 65 year old gentleman is a known case of carcinoma pro uh, prostate post op. Now, on follow up into the third year, the PSA is 40. What is the first? What is the next step? Okay, so what do you want to do? Do you want to do a repeat PSA? Start giving Degarelix? Give RT to the post op bed observation. Excuse me, sir. YouTube live is not been. Uh... Sorry. Navneet usually does YouTube live. Okay. And just wait one minute. It's in process. YouTube live. Doctor Navneet, can you start that? But uh, or. Should be recorded and uploaded in the cloud. No, it's it just give me one minute. It's in process. It will happen. Really, you are awesome, but um, yes, my phone is pathetic now. I'm sorry, it's not working. We'll post the recording. Okay, fine. So, as I said, uh, case scenario one, what do you want to do? Maybe PSA, start Degarelix, give RT to the post op bed observation. So, I have some options of imaging, PSA. We'll just keep that in mind. Then, second question. 65-year-old gentleman is a known case of carcinoma prostate post-op. Now, on follow-up into the third year. PSA is 40, 42, 44. What is your next step? So, PET CT, CT abdomen, pelvis. So, you can quote. I 
I want everyone to participate so that see, it doesn't matter. No one knows what you have voted. So I would like everyone to participate in the poll. Voting done. Okay. So, okay. So, majority have voted Pet CT, CT abdomen. Okay. The next one is Pet CT, pelvis. Sorry, uh, CT abdomen, pelvis, and bone stem. Okay. Okay. So, case scenario three a 60 year old man, a known case of carcinoma prostate post RT, PSA levels were at 15. What is the next step? Just select among these options, you can select one uh, option. Best answer with CT, MRI bone scan, CT abdominal pelvis, PRUS. There are 89 people in the group, in the participant list. At least 70 to 80 percent should definitely vote. So, majority have gone for PSI of HCD. Okay. PSI of HCD has become favorite okay. a 65 year old gentleman is a known case of carcinoma prostate post op now on follow up into the third year it was diagnosed as biochemical recurrence with a psa of 40 and imaging was negative what is your next step i repeat post op third year psa has come back with imaging negative what is your next step Vote, vote, no chatting, please. Only vote. Then, majority of one for hormone therapy. Okay, fine. Some people salvage it. Okay, nice. So the next scenario: a carcinoma, sixty-year-old uh, patient with carcinoma prostate post RT. With a follow up into the third year, same diagnosed as bio, biochemical recurrence, everything is same except instead of post operative, this patient is post RT. Imaging is negative. What is your next step? Oh, come on, come on.
them. Okay, hormone therapy. Everything hormone therapy. Okay, shall Let's start. Should we treat a patient based on PSA spike alone? First, we need to understand whether the PSA spike is a sole occurrence or is it really increased. So, for that, what we need to do is we'll just look at the relevant information regarding prostate. The carcinoma of prostate is a very slow growing tumor. So even after definitive treatment of surgery or radiation plus hormone therapy, 25 to 50 percent develop relapse. But the main question is when do the relapse when do they develop the relapse? And the relapse is generally identified by increase in PSA. And of course uh, for the regular PSA to be increased and that has to be diagnosed, that only happens if there is a regular follow-up. And we already defined what the limits of PSA failure in the last class, either it is post-op or post-RT. If it is radiation, nadir levels plus 2 nanogram increase for a radiation, that is an astrophenics criteria, or nadir plus 3 spikes consecutive spikes of PSA for a post-op. Okay, so the point is, does PSA, PSA spike is a diagnostic of failure? So even if PSA failure happens, okay, yes, PSA failure is an indication of that in the future, distant metastasis can occur, but it doesn't indicate, it doesn't mean that distant metastasis will definitely occur immediately. And Certain patients won't develop distant metastasis for a long time. But the problem is, in a particular set, there is a high chance of distant failure. So, what are the uh, features which point towards there is a high chance of failure in a radiation setting, post radiation setting, high grade, high T stage, more than T3, short interval for biochemical uh, relapse of eight, less than 18 months. Or if there is a post-op patient, positive margins, same feature of higher grade, higher P, uh, P stage, and of course, PSA doubling time, and as usual, short interval for biochemical recurrence less than 18 months. So, as I said, you need to repeat the PSA to understand whether it has failed or not, and especially you should have a good follow-up regarding the patients with these type of features. So once you confirm PSA failure has occurred, what is your next step? First, you need to understand whether the patient is symptomatic or not. That you need to rule out. So then you work up the patient. So what do you do? You need to do an imaging. So the imaging consists of CT abdomen, pelvis, and a bone scan. And of course, the current favorite PSMA PET CT. But the problem with PSMA PET CT is the data is still weak. There is no randomized controlled data regarding the importance of PSMA PET CT. But yes, there is increase in usage of PSMA PET CT. Right now, it has become the favorite of majority consultants. But still, having said that, as of now, the standard remains CT abdomen, pelvis, and a bone scan. Okay. So, and one more thing is this is for a post op patient. In a post RT patient, if only local findings are present and the patient is fit, meaning the patient doesn't have any complaints of back pain, breathing difficulty, abdominal pain, nothing. Ex only the patient has complaints of local symptoms, lower, lower urinary tract symptoms. If the patient is very fit patient, then MRI of the local area of the pelvis should be done. Because if there is only a local recurrence, you need to do an MRI and you need to confirm the recurrence with a biopsy. Okay.
end coming to so you have all this information what do you want to do with this information so you need to start the patient on management some sort of treatment so what do you want to do you want to barbecue the patient with radiation or you want to use the butcher knife for surgery okay so in a post op setting there is always a controversy regarding whether the radiation should be used in an adjuvant setting or a salvage setting okay this boxing match will go on till the radicals data is out even though there are raves data has come but still uh, with a huge number of patients radicals data will have more strength more power regarding the statement so in the presence of ps psa spike or a biochemical recurrence salvage rt should be given and so with this statement comes the next question should we add hormone therapy to salvage rt so there are two trials which showed that get to gfu 16 and rtog 9601 they say if you add at least a biochemical uh, bicalutamide along with salvage rt there is benefit in overall survival and decent metastasis whereas the getum trial it showed that there is improvement in pfs if you use 6 months of uh, grnh okay so there is a benefit of adding hormone therapy to salvage rt okay so what is the target where do you want to irradiate do you want to irradiate the only the post op bed or you want to use the entire pelvis uh, pelvic nodes also the point will come back to the same thing it is only for the post op bed okay so you will generate the ptv uh, ctv for the post op bed using uh, taking into consideration the pre op imaging mri imaging and you will uh, counter the volumes you give the ptv then the dose recommendation is 66 day to 66 day in 33 fractions only to the post op bed currently there are trials which are going which want to evaluate uh prostate uh, post op dose till 72 gray using mrt but still the long term data is awaited okay so coming to post rt setting so the important in this situation is you need to diagnose whether it's only a local failure local regional failure or it is local plus distant also so what you need to do is you need to do an mri of pelvis locally then ct of uh, ct of uh, abdomen then bone scan and once you have all the information once if there is information that it's only a local failure you need to evaluate the, whether the patient is fit for salvage surgery or not okay if it's yes for both questions it's a local failure only and the patient is fit for salvage surgery then yes radical prostatectomy is done yes the next question is what are the alternatives and then can we there be done there are alternatives like hypo cryoablation and salvage brachytherapy also there are very good alternative options but still the evidence is not strong yet and most important thing and most answered most uh, have uh, answered in that way hormone therapy is as of now is not recommended for non metastatic diseases hormone therapy alone okay so then so let's come to metastatic carcinoma of prostate so metastasis and the prostate haddiyon ko vaat lag gaya so it spreads mainly to bones only especially the spinal uh, spinal cord so case scenario 6 a 58 year old with carcinoma of prostate with bone scan positive for mets which one of the following is defined as low volume metastatic disease so among these features which is defined as low volume metastatic disease so we have 30 seconds So everyone majority went for three spine and one pelvic mass. Okay. 
let's see so next a 60 year old man ps1 came with complaints of back pain was diagnosed as uh, carcinoma pro metastatic carcinoma prostate what is the best management is it gnrh gnr plus sabrotron negarelix fluprolite plus bicol what do you want to do 30 seconds Okay, is it done? Luprolite plus bicarbonate. Okay, that's fifty-eight percent. Okay, let's go to the next question. A sixty-year-old, sixty-year-old, same uh, situation, but the answers are different. Uh, options are different. Luprolite plus dosi, negarelix, luprolite plus bicarbonate. Then, okay, blue bread, let's go see. Parent. Scenario number nine. Same situation, you have a better one in the options, docetaxel. Almost same options, but you have abiratron combination, docetaxel combination, combined androgen blockade, or tegaralix. What, what? Then, we have a lot to discuss huge number actually bicarbonate oh close shave 45 versus 44 percent abiratron leads okay I'll... so last question regarding uh, metastatic carcinoma prostate 62 year old complaints of back pain pso performance score zero metastatic carcinoma prostate with solitary meds at l2 what is the best treatment option? Select the best answer among these options.
Okay, I think we'll stop uh, the poll at this time, then we'll go to the discussion. Okay. Oh, 84 percent. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. So this is the most common mode of presentation: metastatic carcinoma of prostate. Because see, no one thinks of spine meds for back pain. They'll just take paracetamol, say that's all. Okay. So how do you manage? Okay. The workup for metastatic carcinoma of prostate is almost similar to PSA failure. You just do imaging. You work up with CT scan, abdomen pelvis, bone scan. The crowd favorite PSM PET CT, or then you follow with that a biopsy. So once that is done, the most important part is risk stratification. Okay, so there, based on two trials, they have classified the patients into Latin, uh, high risk and low risk. Okay, so latitude trial and charted trial, they said. See, either it should be uh, visual meds. I think there is some mistake, some mistake in the slides. See, high risk is like this. Okay, it should be either having visual meds or more than four bone meds. I think I named as both them as high risk. See, the first one is high risk, second one is low risk. It should have one of the following, okay. It should be either having, among, uh, uh, according to latitude trial, it should be either having uh, one of the three, uh, two of the three, more than three bone mets, visceral metastasis, grade four or five, okay. Among these three features, if two or more than two are there, that is high risk. Based on charted trial, it should be either more than four bone mets. Among the four bone mets, it should have at least one metastasis outside spine and visceral metastasis. If you go and look at the uh, sixth scenario, you will see visceral mets, that's a high risk, high volume disease. Four, uh, four pelvic bone mets, that's <clears throat> outside the spine, that's a high volume disease. Three spine plus uh, one pelvic mets is again three spine with one outside spine that's a high volume high volume disease if you look at only four spine metastasis if it is not outside the spine it can be classified as low volume metastatic disease that is what i was trying to go for okay then now oh, this discussion will start okay the king and the brother so till now the standard has always been ADT, androgen deprivation therapy. So the next question will be, should we add bicalcamide to GNRH analog and create comprained androgen blockade or should we give Degarelix and completely replace combined androgen blockade plus GNRH analog, uh, uh, analog with antagonist. So regarding this, it's been since 20 years since the first randomized trial, but it's still the fight goes on. Why is, see, let's take a look at the biology first. Okay, so why do we need to add bicalcamide to a GNRH analog? What is that? Is it, uh, what is the advantage of Tegarelix over the combination? This is answered with simple physiology regarding GNRH release, peripheral suppression, or <clears throat> and the most importantly, the phenomena of layer. layer. Okay. So, if you look at this picture, you will understand. This slide will show you. You have a hypothalamus. So, this is uh, different levels of action of uh, hormone therapy in, in carcinoma of prostate. So, in the left picture, you'll, you can see that hypothalamus. So, below that is the pituitary stroke, the pituitary stroke, and then the pituitary, anterior pituitary gland. So, the GNRH uh, agonist from the hypothalamus comes to the pituitary stimulate the receptors and then which cause release of FSH and LH molecule stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone and these hormone levels the the testis, testis is converted uh, is released and which acts like a food for prostate gland okay so what happens is 
initially generally in the uh, the hypothalamus sends hormones in a pulsed manner it is not continuous it is a pulsed manner and low level very low levels but when we give an hormone therapy in the form of gnrh analog what happens is the hormone is at a stable level point number 1 and the point number 2 is initial over stimulation occurs because you have given a hormone which will cause initial spike in fsh lh and the testosterone but as the time goes on because of higher levels of hormone therapy uh, given uh, given through exogenous route the receptors are down regulated which leads to decrease in the levels of fsh and lh okay so agonists will down regulate the production of fsh and lh but because of the spike what happens is they can be a flare of clinical symptoms they can be flare of psa levels okay but down the time down regulation of receptors and then it will cause decrease in gn uh, uh, fsh lh release so this is how the agonist work but why is antagonist coming into the picture so the this slide will explain to you so you have lh your patient with with pain and you have testosterone <clears throat> in a in a graph you can see once you have starting at zero you have administered the patient with lhrh analog then it will cause a spike of lh in 24 hours but it it goes back to castrate levels by 3 weeks but but the pain the pain peaks in 36 hours and the pain begins in 12 hours okay so gradually that also will come into picture uh, in, at castrate levels you can see the correlation between lh and testosterone they both reach castrate levels by 3 weeks okay so remember that so what is this degarelix this is the antagonist so this, this drug was developed with an intent to cut short the flare phenomenon so they didn't want the patients with the uh, bone mets to have a uh, spike in the pain okay so they are used initially before uh, disco discovering or, or before uh, inventing degarelix medication they tried decreasing the flare phenomena with multiple combinations especially bicalutamide sorry i think instead of flut uh, flutamide i wrote glutamine uh, flutamide cepatrona state multiple variants but still there was a mild flare up of clinical symptoms so i just want to put why degarelix is so important see this slide will will explain to you how degarelix is so good regarding decreasing the flare symptoms so you have uh, lupron in injection 1.5 mg which will cause increase in the uh, testosterone levels okay so but along with that you have uh, degarelix which is literally low, lowering the testosterone levels to such a level that on day 1 itself it is almost reaching quite low levels okay so this slide will explain to you what is the importance of at uh, why they try to replace degarelix uh, in the in the place of uh, lupulite okay so based on this information should we add degarelix in place of analogs okay that's the million dollar question yes you can consider but the question you should be asking is what is the benefit who gets it and what is the extent the problem is lack of strong data regarding the antagonist tool yes it has been shown in randomized control trials regarding that is it is very good uh, at controlling the flare phenomena but that has not come back in multiple randomized trials still the uh, standard remains uh, gnrh analog so the reason being is except except for decreasing cast uh, testosterone levels in the first 28 days first i repeat first 28 days of giving the medication there is no benefit of giving degarelix except for that nothing okay so the conclusion is yes you can give degarelix only only if there is a significant clinical deterioration risk because of flare phenomenon there are few conditions like cord compression because of uh, spine metastasis 
spinal column metastasis, vertebral metastasis, or you have a bladder outlet obstruction where uh, flare can cause uh, urine, like it can block the urine outflow. Okay, in this, you can definitely consider giving dagaralics. Okay, so till now, it was very simple because it was either analog or antagonist. The fight was simple, decision easy. So, as it said, life is never simple. So, enter abiratron and docetaxel. Okay, so let's have a look at docetaxel. It's a chemotherapy drug which acts by inhibiting microtubules in metaphase. It prevents uh, depolymerization, liver metabolism, blood secretion, dose 75. Yes, but was it beneficial in adding to ADT? The charted trial initially, that was the first trial, which said yes. There is, if you add docetaxel to hormone therapy, yes, there is an improvement in uh, survival 57.6 months versus 44 months. Okay. So even they have tried multiple, like they tried to compare whether there is a uh, uh, change in uh, uh, survival, if there is a, a uh, survival benefit in both high volume and low volume disease definitely in high volume disease there is a significant benefit 49.2 or 32 almost 17 months benefit uh, in median overall survival in for a high volume disease but still regarding the low volume disease they said it is not that it's significant uh, difference between the, uh, these two yes there is a difference but still not as significant okay so they looked at the charted subgroups and the uh, concept was similar. There is a benefit, but still long-term data is uh, uh, needs to come regarding the low volume disease. So it was analyzed in various subgroups, the OS data. So addition of docetaxel showed OS volume benefit. As I said, high volume meds or de novo meds with high volume disease. So it should be a newly diagnosed carcinoma met metastasis or an old existing uh, uh, metastatic carcinoma prostate, but it should have high volume disease. It was not that significant regarding low, low volume. Okay. And then they have looked at multiple trials also, meta-analysis, charted, ghetto, stampede. So everywhere the point was sim simple. Okay. The addition of six cycles of docetaxel is beneficial if it is added to androgen deprivation therapy. Okay. So next comes aberatron estate. The aberatron estate is simple. It acts, there are two roles, uh, two sources of testosterone in a male patient or a prostate cancer patient. One comes from the, the testis and the second comes from your adrenal gland. So they thought if the patient uh, if you cut down the patient uh, source from adrenal gland also, you will have a better and, uh, castration for the patient. So, what they discovered is you can uh, cytochrome P17 uh, inhibitor. Uh, if you add that, what happens is there is a decrease in testosterone levels using this. Okay, this picture will, uh, will explain to you why, what are the side effects also based on uh, the flowchart. Okay, so this was diagnosed, this was proven that uh, addition of ADT, uh, addition of abiratron plus prednisolone is beneficial in latitude trial. So, there was a difference in radiographic uh, progression free survival and there was a difference in oral survival also when abiratron is added with ADT. Okay, and then even stampede. Sample trial is an UK trial, UK based trial with multiple arms. So even that said, yes, there is a significant overall survival. And the best part is they showed that it is there in uh, non metastatic disease and metastatic disease. But the problem was the significance was not, uh, sorry, the difference was not significant in non metastatic disease. Metastatic disease, yes, but in non metastatic disease, it was there only in the form of failure free survival. So the standard is you can add in metastatic disease, disease definitely, but not as of now in non-metastatic disease. So 
Yeah. So yes, there was a significant improvement in thirty-seven uh, percent improvement in survival. Okay. Then yes, this is the latitude data. Uh, improvement of uh, survival by at three years, sixty-six percent versus forty-nine percent. Okay. Then. I just wanted to add a slide regarding uh, abrectron acetate and prednisolone. You can go through that. Okay, and then yes, there was uh, meta-analysis. Okay, so which showed compared to docetaxel, abrectron is better. Okay, yes, it is. There is no head-on randomized control trial. There was one meta-analysis called stop cap systematic review or network meta-analysis. Which said that compared, to, I repeat, compared to docetaxel, abiraterol is better, but still there is no randomized control uh, trial. So what you need to do is you need to take a personal call regarding that. If the patient is fit for docetaxel, yes, docetaxel can be considered. If the patient is not fit for docetaxel, then abiraterol can be given. So till this time, even the uh, ISTO guidelines, NCN guidelines, everything said docetaxel. Can be given if it is high volume disease, but regarding the low volume, it's not that significant. You can consider. Okay, so what does meta analysis say? Increase the PFS benefit by adding abiraterone or docetaxel, but OS benefit overall benefit only for high. So regarding the whole low volume, the current data is. It's not suggesting there is a benefit, but yet. So let's see. Okay. So this was a slide. If you want to take a decision regarding uh, whether we should start the patient on docetaxel or abiraterone, you should take into consideration what are the side effect profile. Okay. You have uh, hematological toxicity, uh, liver uh, toxicity, diarrhea. So you can see the comparisons. We compare to docetaxel. The patient, if the patient takes abiraterone, prednisolone, prednisolone, side effect profile is less. So you have less side effects when you take abiraterone plus prednisolone compared to docetaxel because both of them have a common feature, which is increased risk of pedal edema. Okay, so that can be decreased. Okay, docetaxel has effect on bone marrow, liver, GIT, nausea. Uh, and you have a risk of peripheral neuropathy, especially you have a high risk of febrile neutropenia. So, you, looking at this data, you can consider abiraterone plus prednisolone. Okay. But, but, should we take a decision based on only the side effect profile? <coughs> then <coughs> they analyze the data using retrospective data. Uh, they analyze the data using retrospective series. So, what they found is the patient who should be given if they are fit for a docetaxel, if there is a shorter treatment due to, like, if the shorter uh, failure is survival, these study which, which, which said that these patients will be, be, get benefit from docetaxel compared to these patients. So, you have contraindication for prednisolone, you have a heart failure disease. The heart failure risk is higher with abiraterone. So, poor diabetic control, which is a problem with prednisolone. Okay, so based on this, you will take a decision. Okay, so after all the fighting and everything, Degarelix was thrown out, compromise was achieved. Abiraterone and Docetaxel were added to the ADT. So that became the standard. But even now, the Abiraterone and Docetaxel, they kept on fighting, which is best, which is best. Then our Bahubari story became Game of Thrones. Then the uh, drug which is coming to the picture is Enzerotomide. So this was, this drug is an androgen receptor inhibitor. Okay, it, uh, instead of bicaltamide where the action is only at the top, Enzerotomide acts at multiple levels. It acts inside the cytoplasm, in the nucleus, everywhere inhibition occurs. Okay, yes, there are some other drugs like apalatomide and darolatomide, but enzalatomide is generally used. So there was this uh, a trial, Enzamet, okay, so which uh, they uh, compared standard of treatment versus ADT versus add addition of uh, enzalatomide, okay. So 
this is the trial in the med trial which showed there is overall survival benefit when compared with when added to adp okay then uh, what was the amount of benefit <coughs> so the hazard ratio was 0.81 okay so there was significant benefit and one second okay so a uh, significant benefit with the addition of enzalutamide so these are the main toxicity so the toxicity profile of enzalutamide is mainly in the central nervous system okay so main problem is with fatigue loss of uh, motivation so the patient will feel very depressed okay that is one and there is a high risk of seizures also especially so especially if the patient has a uh, history of seizures you should not give enzalutamide or you should be very careful prescribing enzalutamide and uh, one is hypertension also that has to be taken care and one point i i forgot to mention is bone marrow suppression there is a mild suppression of bone marrow but not significant but still it's there okay so yes this for a this was the data which showed that uh, cns event so fatigue cns so the maximum fatigue the maximum fatigue was present with chemotherapy and enzalutamide and the maximum cns uh, event like loss of motivation uh, seizures that was their maximum with i repeat chemotherapy and enzalutamide so you need to keep that in in mind before taking a decision which to add okay so the next question is so you have options of adding abiraterone enzalutamide and docetaxel in a metastatic carcinoma of prostate so next question will come if there is a, a metastasis in a carcinoma of prostate should we add radiation okay so thus that was compared in one of the arms of uh, stampy what did it is uh, sorry what did it is they have uh, added a radiation of 36 gray in six fractions uh, or uh, 55 gray in 20 fractions in a patient with carcinoma of prostate with metastasis multiple metastasis what they understood is Uh, in all patients there was not that significant benefit but but in patients with low metastatic burden okay there was a significant benefit in three year overall survival 81% versus 73% but regarding the either higher burden or overall uh, this is a group there was no significant benefit so in a simple single slide in a metastatic castration sensitive disease what is the st uh, standard is it, it can be classified into high volume or low volume in a high volume you can add docetaxel to adt you can add abiraterone you can add uh, enzalutamide or abiraterone but in a low volume disease regarding the docetaxel addition yes it's not at that significant but you can add abiraterone enzalutamide if it is less than uh, 3 to 5 mets def definitely prostate radiation helps okay so that these are the take home messages adt remains the mainstay you, you can addition of docetaxel has benefit addition of abiraterone has benefit addition of air antagonist enzalutamide has benefit and in a low volume disease i repeat low volume disease addition of radiation to the primary has always been good okay let's come to castrate resistant prostate cancer sir uh, we okay. can give all these together no 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 you can't give all these together you have to give only one drug combination along with adt okay. can you please go back to the slide uh, yes can you please go back to the slide yes which slide ah uh, this one only yeah yeah we cannot give all this we can give uh, a combination only yes okay sir which which one sorry sir which one combination the either you can take adt rosetaxel <coughs> adt abiraterone or adt enzalutamide which combination i will come to the conclusion at the end it should be based on the side effect profile tolerance 
patient preference everything has to be taken into consideration because if the patient is old patient if he is not fit for uh, uh, docetaxel meaning that he is quite frail then you can't give docetaxel if the patient has a history of cardiac side effects has a history of hypertension the patient has history of <clears throat> uh, beta edema increased uh, beta edema uh, cardiomyopathy you can't give abiraterone and if the patient has history of uh, seizures and a uh, high uh, chance of depression like the patient is on anti depression medication then you can't consider enzalutamide so the decision has to be taken based on the patient's tolerance disease pattern everything okay only you can add only one of this with adt the gnr roch unlock only one can be added okay sir thank you So let's come to castrate resistant prostate cancer. So that is case scenario number eleven. Sixty-seven year old PS one own case of carcinoma prostate, post RT, ADT for three years. Now he came for follow up with the PSA of twenty to twenty five. What is your next step? What do you want to do in this patient? I think we need to. <clears throat> Cut short the time for uh, polling because we are already at eight fifteen. And the metastatic carcinoma of prostate is quite extensive. If uh, I I want people to vote a bit faster so that we can go to the discussion. Okay, all very nice, very nice. Okay, <clears throat> case scenario number twelve. So, sixty-three year old PS one metastatic carcinoma of prostate. That is castrate resistant prostate carcinoma. So, what is your best treatment? What do you want to do? Please vote fast so that we can go forward the, for the discussion. and please everyone uh, start voting abrator okay 63 year old ps1 known case of metastatic carcinoma back pain castrate resistant prostate cancer what do you mean what do you <clears throat> recommend as a best treatment any of the above majority yes okay case scenario number 14 ps1 metastatic carcinoma of prostate castrate resistant and the patient has history of mild cardiomyopathy and he is on medication so what do you want to do uh someone said uh is there any question someone said someone raise their hand yes poll results majority in zero to one okay so a 59 year old metastatic carcinoma of prostate 
first treated with ADT for six months. He developed uh, visceral meds and was diagnosed as CRPC. What is the best treatment option? So you have visceral meds <clears throat> and the patient has recovered within six months. Does it test? Yes. So metastatic carcinoma prostate on ADT for two years. The patient was uh, diagnosed as CRPC uh, on spine meds. He was treated with abiraterone. No bone scan says widespread bone mix. Widespread. What do you want to treat with? Docetex. Oh, oh, 59 year old, carcinoma of prostate, spine meds, treated with docetaxel. Now it has spread. So instead of abiraterone, you are initially treated the patient with docetaxel. So now, what do you want to do? Capacitaxel. Okay. So it's majority capacitaxel, but good number for abiraterone and endoterone. So, so 64 year old, ADT plus docetaxel, then he developed spinal metastasis, CRPC, rotated to the patient on abiraterone, <coughs> widespread metastasis. What is the next best treatment option? Okay. How about the text? <clears throat> so, 59 year old, carcinoma prostate, with meds, post ADT, now on developed osteolytic spine meds, diagnosed as uh, CRPC. Treatment plan is with docetaxel. So, what's the agent to be added? You want to use denosumab, calcium plus vitamin D. Urotonic acid or combinations of uh, multiple things. Okay. So majority went for two plus three. <clears throat> so you want to use urotonic acid, calcium, and vitamin D. Oh. So complaints of back pain, evaluation, carcinoma prostate with multiple lumbar vertebra, L2 vertebra, says spinal cord compression. So how do you want to manage?
So this is the last uh, poll, I think, and we'll go directly to the discussion part. Fantastic. Majority went for high dose steroids and SS for surgery. Okay. So what is the definition of castrate resistant prostate cancer? See, when you start the patient on ADT, what happens is, so you literally cause medical castration. That means you have medically removed the source of <clears throat> testosterone, that is your testis. So, at that time, the testosterone levels fall to less than 50 nanogram per deciliter. Less than, okay. So, if when you say castrate resistant, even after you have done castration, so testosterone is less than 50, still there is a biochemical progression or a radiological progression. So, biochemical progression in the form of three consecutive rises in PSA done one week apart. Okay, with two rises, more than 50% rise in over Nadir, it should be more than 2 nanogram and it should be raising by more than 50%. Then that is biochemical progression or you can have a radiological progression, either appearance of new bone lesions or soft tissue lesions. So this is called castrate resistant prostate cancer. Okay, so actually this is more complicated than... Uh, Metastatic carcinoma of prostate is like abiratron, enzalutamide, docetaxel, and uh, among these three combinations, you want to give abiratron or enzalutamide before or after docetaxel, which, when, and why. That is a huge question. Yes, there is no data regarding which to start first, which is better, but let's look at the uh, literature. And one second. See, uh, really, uh, you have non-metastatic CRPs, okay? So you have castration level of uh, testosterone levels, and then you have biochemical PSA failure alone, okay? So you don't, you don't have any uh, soft tissue lesions or a bone metastasis. In this scenario, the only drug which would benefit was enzalutamide, okay? So that is a quite rare scenario where CRPC presents without mess meds. And if you take into consideration, sorry, if you take into consideration the advanced imaging techniques which we are using right now, this makes this clinical situation almost literally non-existent. Okay, but but if it's diagnosed as CRPC. And then the option remains enzalutamide as a standard. So this was a trial which showed <clears throat> you can sequence enzalutamide before the meds in a CRPC setting. And that showed increase in metastasis free survival compared to <clears throat> placebo alone. So that's almost a 22 month survival compared to uh, giving no treatment. In N0, sorry, M0 castration resistant post cancer. Okay. So, as I said, the most common presentation of CRPC with is meds. If so, how did we manage? How do you how did we manage initially and what has changed now? That's the point. Okay. So initially, if it has progressed on uh, <clears throat> hormone therapy, the standard was what they did was. They are. They try to uh, evaluate the role of mitosantron plus prednisolone for the steroid at all. So that showed a palliative pain response, which was better with mitosantron. Okay, that was almost 43 weeks versus 18 weeks palliation response was there. But yet there was no overall survival benefit. Okay, there is some question here. Uh, yes, apart and uh, apart can be added. See. Uh, yes, pardon trial is there. There are multiple trials. So you have daratomide, uh, abiratomide, enzalutamide. But I wanted to restrict myself with abiratron, enzalutamide, and docetaxel, which is itself is quite extensive. So I'm, yes, I'm sorry that push point I have removed it. But yes, that's one of the options. Thank you.
so <clears throat> there was no oral survival benefit so the next step was addition of docetaxel so can we add docetaxel plus plus prednisolone versus mitoxantron can we compare that so that was done in tax 327 trial okay so which showed there is benefit in addition of docetaxel versus mitoxantron there was a significant uh, more than 50% decrease in psa there was a significant improvement in oral survival and the quality of life was almost definitely higher with docetaxel compared to mitoxantron so then the next question was should we add abiraterone <clears throat> in the first line for metastatic crpc that was done with coo 302 trial which showed that compared to prednisolone alone you have a significant benefit of adding abiraterone okay so that was shown in the form of radiographic progression pre survival okay then why not enzalutamide obviously that question will come this was done in prevail trial which showed that <clears throat> even before adding chemotherapy so at see this was the literally docetaxel was leading it was the standard of care for crpc but at the arrival of abiraterone and enzalutamide based on coo 302 and prevail trial literally challenged should we add docetaxel alone even the patient is not paid should we uh, and uh, treat the patient using low, uh, low uh, decreased uh, dose of uh, docetaxel or can we start giving abiraterone or enzalutamide to these type of patients who are not fit for docetaxel this was shown uh, by coo302 and prevail trends so based on these data in the first line management you have abiraterone based on coo302 enzalutamide based on prevail docetaxel based on tax 327 okay then comes the next point is there a role of abiraterone or enzalutamide in a post dosis setting yes the docetax uh, after the patient has been started on docetaxel and still there was a failure in the form of either new bone met bone lesions or as well as spread to visceral metastasis then based on coo301 there was an improvement in oral survival when the patient was added with abiraterone so as next point should we add enzalutamide or abiraterone there was <clears throat> next afm trial which said enzalutamide also improved oral survival in patient who have been treated on uh, docetaxel so you have abiraterone and enzalutamide either in the pre dosis setting and the post dosis setting but after this let's look at the toxicity profile you have abiraterone plus prednisolone prednisolone and as enzalutamide okay so you generally what happens is the role of uh, the side effect profile consists of edema which is because of increased <coughs> sorry increased the concentration of aldosterone or its precursors in abiraterone plus prednisolone combination so that is the reason you have more edema low potassium hypertension cardiac side effects more in abiraterone plus prednisolone combination but the most important problem is the fatigue the fatigue cns fatigue is more with enzalutamide so that we need to remember okay so this is one slide which i try to compare abiraterone enzalutamide and docetaxel okay so this you can uh, go through <clears throat> post after the class so the point is even now there is no data regarding which is better abiraterone or enzalutamide one study phase 4 study was there uh, post market surveillance which said abiraterone gave worst cognitive decline and there was a react study in crpc metastatic crpc which said enzalutamide showed more fatigue there was a retro retrospective data in the form of the name itself is retrospective which said enzalutamide patients required dose reductions because of cns cns side of uh, fatigue uh, uh, cns fatigue or dep increased depression and there was phase 2 trial which said enzalutamide is better than abiraterone 
own atheist, it was only in PSA response. So then comes, is there any role of next level, next gen chemotherapy if the patient has failed on docetaxel? Yes, there was a trial, which is tropic trial, which said if the patient has failed on docetaxel, can we give cabazitaxel or should we go ahead with mitosantron alone plus redesolone? So this showed that there was an improved, uh, improved overall survival. 15 months versus 12.7 months, increased PFS, but there was no difference in pain response. Yes, there was an increase in toxicity profile that I will show you. So here you can see I, I, there is a comparison data from docetaxel uh, from TAX327 and cabazitaxel in tropic trial. The docetaxel in uh, TAX327, it was compared with uh, mitosantron plus uh, prednisolone and cabazitaxel also. There was a comparison between cabazitaxel versus mitosantron. So the second arm, the control arm was similar in both trials. So taking this data into comparison, you can see that there was higher peripheral neuropathy okay, in uh, docetaxel arm, but there was febrile uh, risk of higher risk of neutropenia, especially febrile neutropenia and higher risk of diarrhea. So compared to, uh, you can compare these two uh, drugs in this slide. Okay. Yes, uh, if the patient developed febrile neutropenia, they monitored the patient and the patient was kept on GMGSF. So the next thing is if the patient has failed on abiraterone or enzalutamide, should we go with, so if the patient is on abiraterone, should we shift, if the patient has failed on abiraterone, should we shift to enzalutamide or should we shift to cabazitaxel? So this was answered by CART trial, CART study. So where if the metastatic CRPC patients have progressed on abiraterone or enzalutamide, either it can be before or after docetaxel, should we start the patient on another uh, anti-androgen novel therapy or cabazitaxel? This showed that cabazitaxel, there is improvement in overall survival or improvement in uh, uh, progression through survival by radiology by using cabazitaxel. Okay. Why? Because you should remember one thing. Okay. There is a little bit cross resistance between anti-androgen signaling pathway, especially with uh, either abiraterone or enzalutamide. If one is resistant, the patient will definitely have some sort of resistance to abiraterone if the initial drug was enzalutamide. So there is some cross resistance. And they have compared the side effect profiles also. And it was shown that there is no much uh, side effect uh, profile difference. Okay, so based on this information, you have evidence that in the second line management, you have option of abiraterone, enzalutamide, and cabazitaxel based on these trials. Okay, so these are the these are the drugs and these are the trials which showed that uh, in the pre docetaxel setting, you can give either abiraterone or enzalutamide. And in the post docetaxel setting, based on uh, Dropex, COU301, Affirm, Alisimpa, you can consider cabazitaxel, abiraterone, and enzalutamide. So I'm not going much into radium, radium 223 because already it's quite extensive. So, so the point was so based on so much data, so much data, what should be the decision taking clinical symptoms? So based on that, what they understood is what the uh, retrospective data, what showed was if there is a higher risk of, uh, if the patient is failing very early on an ADT, that means it is a more aggressive disease. So the patient should be started on chemotherapy. If the patient is tolerating ADT well enough, then you can consider androgen uh, therapy, novel androgen anti androgens also. So this is a quite significant or sorry, quite extent, uh, extensive data. So too much data. So from the info available, these are the results.
in conclusion what we should take into consideration is what is the risk of pedal edema what is the risk of uh, cardiac comorbidity based on the fluid retention what is the risk of bone marrow depression and fibrinal neutropenia so what is the risk of seizures so based on the tumor biology based on the patient's performance status or the general condition so these after taking into consideration these factors so the choice of treatment in the first line among these three you should take into consideration if the patient is very fit no cardiac issues you can consider docetaxel if the patient is not fit for chemotherapy then abiraterone can be considered enzalutamide is an antiandrogen it has the least side effect profile but the most important is it has significant cns fatigue the majority of the patients they won't come for regular follow up okay we have seen that so if the patient is already dull or depressed with uh, having carcinoma of prostate for so much time and uh, has some uh, signs of depression you should be very cautious regarding starting on enzalutamide and the patient is very uh, he has failed very early on anti androgen therapy or adt then the patient should be considered for docetaxel if he is fit so you should take into consideration tumor biology and patient gc okay in the second line what to use it depends on what the initial treatment was and how the patient how fit the patient is right now so if the patient is started on docetaxel initially then you should offer the new novel hormone therapy and vice versa in the second if the patient was on hormone therapy initially you can consider either docetaxel or cabazitaxel you can you can do that so regarding docetaxel or cabazitaxel which to use better if no chemotherapy was used before then definitely give a trial with docetaxel so then you can give the uh, uh, the option of uh, cabazitaxel for third line but should can we use cabazitaxel in the first line alone there was a trial first ana trial which said which compared cabazitaxel versus docetaxel and it showed that it is non inferior still still tropic trial showed that cabazitaxel can be given post dose so the best thing for the patient is you can give a shot with docetaxel in the second line, in the uh, before uh, cabazitaxel if the patient is progressing on uh, docetaxel uh, in the prior setting then you can start the patient on docetaxel uh, sorry cabazitaxel so the point is i won't say this is the entire data on carcinoma of prostate as i said before i haven't gone to apalutamide i haven't gone to darutamide i am not discussing much about radium but and uh, other things as uh, combination of radium with uh, enzalutamide abiraterone but as of now we have enough data to review and understand the decision making okay can docetaxel be given after cabazitaxel no as of now there is no data to say uh, cabazitaxel uh, can be given pre dose yes there was that first ana trial but looking at the uh, data available it is better to reserve cabazitaxel as the third line okay so that would be my conclusion so how many months of uh, how many months of docetaxel you can rechallenge with docetaxel in metastatic crp c and which subset the if the what i am saying is if the patient has uh, progress on docetaxel i would definitely rather than rechallenging with docetaxel i would consider starting the patient on abiraterone or uh, uh, enzalutamide okay but if the patient has a uh, visceral crisis yes if after 6 months or 1 year then i can consider uh, docetaxel rechallenge but still i think uh, looking at the side effect profile i won't take risk of rechallenge docetaxel i will go with novel anti uh, like anti androgen therapy rather than going with crp uh, docetaxel uh, what about parp inhibitors so, so that i am not covering in this class 
and I have no idea about uh, power point meters. Yes, I have read that there is a role of power point meters, uh, but no, I am I, I don't know about that. How long should we give abiraterone and enzotamide or docetaxel? See, docetaxel. Yes, I have uh, seen patients being given almost ten cycles. Yes, if the patient is able to tolerate, you can go beyond ten cycles also. But generally, it's on an average ten cycles. There is multiple retrospective data regarding you can stop the patient on ten cycles itself. If the patient is still uh, progressing on. Uh, if the patient is uh, still fit for docetaxel, then you can go ahead with uh, one more, uh, some more cycles. But no, I will not go beyond ten. My personal choice is ten cycles. And abiraterone and enzalutamide, you can continue till progression. Okay. And uh, maximum number of cabazitaxel. See, it is generally till progression, which will definitely progression. Uh, the patient will go on progression, but at least six cycles should be given. Maximum number, I don't think they have tried the maximum number till progression will go on. In neuroendocrine, I have seen giving PARV inhibitors. I am not sure. I don't know. I don't know about PARV inhibitors. I read about uh, role of PARV inhibitors, but uh, out of all four, which gives early response. The, the fastest response will come through uh, chemotherapy, docetaxel. But uh, comparing docetaxel and cabazitaxel, not much difference. So if that is yet, we, we can discuss regarding uh, the questions, doubts and everything in the post the class. So we'll just finish the bone meds part, then we can go. Okay. So most prostate cancers have painful bone metastasis. So the common complications include fracture, vertebral collapse, spinal cord compression. So the point is how to deal with them. Okay. So prefer preferably it should be dealt in a multidisciplinary team setting. Okay. Why? Because see, you can control the pain by giving external wave radiation or infusion uh, of uh, bisphosphonates. And yes, there are alternatives with, which are a cementation of uh, vertebral meds or a palliative surgery. But if there is impending spinal cord compression, okay, preferably you start the patient on high dose steroids and then you should discuss with the neurosurgeon whether you can Consider decompression, then uh, you can add external beam radiation. Or if the decompression is not possible, you start the patient on high-dose steroids, add uh, EBRT, then you can add chemotherapy or androgen plus bone protection agents. Okay. So regarding the uh, bone metastasis, see what happens is the prostate cancer cells they release some growth factors of cytokines. So this actually affects the osteoblast and osteoclast. Depending on which type of uh, factors are more, it can either cause increased activity of osteoblast or it can cause increased act activity of osteoclast. Okay. So which leads to either high density or osteosclerotic lesions, osteoblastic lesions or osteolytic lesions. Either it can be hyperdense or hypodense or showing lytic lesions. Okay. And how does the bisphosphonates and uh, denosumab, which are two bone protection agents, how do, how do they act? Okay. So what happens is the bisphosphonates, they actually have the high affinity for... One second, there is someone... Can we go for surgery first without starting on high dose steroids if the patient is still for surgery? Yes, see, if you have a patient who has complaints of paraparesis because of uh, spinal lesions, you don't want the paraparesis to progress to paraplegia. So you need to relieve some pressure on the spinal cord. So what you do is you start the patient on high dose steroids, which will cause some mild relief to the patient. Then ask the uh, opinion of neurosurgeon 
then if the patient is fit you can go for surgery but the most important thing is rather than surgery you should start you should uh, first give some sort of relief to the patient then yes take a decision okay so hydrosteroids should be started as soon as possible relieve some pressure give some relief to the patient then take a decision okay so either it can cause osteoblastosis or osteoclastosis so bisphosphonate especially the hyaluronic acid which is right now the standard so this actually goes and binds to the hydroxyapatite crystals in the bone so it will just be inactive form in the inactive form attached to the hydroxyapatite crystals but when the osteoclast comes and destroys that uh, bone 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 fragment immediately the hydroxyapatite uh, releases the hyaluronic acid this cause osteoclast to go into apoptosis this is how hyaluronic acid works denosumab what happens is denosumab literally acts by uh, rank line receptor act uh, receptor activated nu uh, nuclear kappa factor so that is inhibited which leads to it's an antibody against the rank ligand that leads to decrease in the uh, activity of osteoblasts okay so this is how the osteoblastic lesion and osteolytic lesion looks so you have on the left side you have osteolytic lesion where there is a hypodensity because of destruction of bone fragment on the right side you have a uh, hyperdense lesion on this on the vertebra because of increased deposition of bone uh, bone bone formation by osteoblasts okay so we keep hearing skeletal related events the word will be uh, re repeated in breast cancer multiple myeloma prostate cancer what do you mean by skeletal re related event it can be significant pain it can be pathological fracture it can be spinal cord compression or independent compression or because of uh, fracture it can be a surgery that was done to the bone because sometimes the patient presents with a uh, fracture and the patient will be immediately shifted for surgery and it can be it, it will be done but it is quite rare okay but right now recently there is a new technical term okay that is symptomatic skeletal event sse so this is the new uh, end point in the all the new latest clinical trends so even if there is an appearance of bone metastasis but what is important is whether it is symptomatic or not okay use it, taking that into consideration in this situation what do you want to do whether you want to add hyaluronic acid or you want to add denosumab which do you want to do okay so there was initial studies regarding hyaluronic acid which was done by saad et al and james et al they said think the picture is wrong so they said in the carcinoma uh, cancer resistant prostate cancer crpc addition of hyaluronic acid to the treatment leads to delay in skeletal related event by 5 months and there was always benefit of 2.5 months yes it was not significant but it was there and the side effects included hypocalcemia and osteonecrosis okay so this was the benefit okay so then you can see compared to 18.1 months 13.1 month, months there was a significant benefit okay by addition of zolotronic acid okay then the next set of uh, research started regarding the use of uh, denosumab by smith and the fizazi et al which who said why don't we compare zolotronic acid and denosumab in a randomized control trial so which was either based on skeletal sorry symptomatic skeletal event so it showed that the there was significant benefit of adding denosumab compared to zolotronic acid so it was almost 18% reduction in first skeletal related event okay so that was the important part okay and yes there is a main side effect profile of denosumab uh, hypocalcemia osteonecrosis skin infections uh, compared to skin infection uh, hypocalcemia osteonecrosis and skin infections were quite rare so why do you need to add bone production uh, agents in the Trials. So the point is, 
whatever uh, trial we have done, initial trials we have, to have been done, they have done you by comparison of ADT and Zorodronic acid or Denosumab. But even in the new trials, which is Spartan, Prosper, Prevail, Affirm, COU301, even all these trials, compared to the placebo, there was an increase in fracture rates. So fracture is nothing but skeletal related event. So in this uh, trials also, if there is a fracture risk, what they, we should definitely add a bone production agent to this hormone therapy combinations. Okay, so can we, the next question was, if we can delay, can we prevent the bone metastasis itself? So there was uh, two trials, Stampede and Zeus trials. If there is no bone metastasis, so don't add zeldronic acid. That was the conclusion from these two, uh, these two trials, Stampede and Zeus. But the trial of AMG-147, it said, yes, denosumab prevented onset of new bone metastasis which was favoring the data presented by Lipton et al. and Fuzzy et al. So, denosumab has benefit of preventing onset of new bone metastasis significantly. So, I don't want to go into more literature review because it's quite extensive. Because initially it was only ADD plus zolotronic acid or denosumab era. So, with the arrival of new novel therapies, does the benefit still exist? So, from the uh, PS3 trial, this was a new interim uh, results of a PS3 trial. It said addition of denosumab decreased the risk of fracture from 13% to 0%. There is no, there was no fracture in a patient who was uh, started on denosumab. This is a trial. PS3 is a trial which uh, evaluated the role of abiraterone or enzalutamide along with denosumab. So, to prevent these side effects. The patient should be on calcium and vitamin D supplements, and the follow up should be regular regarding a DEXA scan. Okay, so based on these trials, the information is as follows Denosumab is better than zoledronic acid, hands down, it has been proved. But, but is it cost effective? Because if you look at Denosumab cost, it is 20,000 rupees in India, but if you look at the cost of zolotronic acid, it is uh, ranging around 1600 to 4000 rupees. So, so in conclusion, denosumab is more effective than zolotronic acid, but you should take into consideration the economic toxicity of it because if you continue adding zolotronic acid or denosumab for one year, the cost of adding denosumab for one year is per month injection is almost 2.5 lakhs but the cost of adding zolotronic acid for one year is 18,000. so if you look at on an average i'm saying if you look at 2.5 lakh versus 30 to 45,000, I, I think you can understand which to take into consideration for <laughs> advice to the patient okay so let's collect our thoughts regarding the management okay let's Keep it simple and silly. Take home messages. ADT mainstay is the treatment of choice regarding metastatic castration sensitive prostate cancer. Sorry, how frequently we do DEXA scan on follow up? If the patient is on ADT, definitely six monthly. So, addition of docetaxel to ADT. OS benefit this, this this is the same slide which I am repeating. Abiratron addition, OS benefit, air antagonist, angelitomide or abiratomide, OS benefit. Addition of radiotherapy to the primary in low volume disease alone. Okay. CRPC, first line can be considered as abiratron, angelitomide, docetaxel. Second line, abiratron, angelitomide, cabazitaxel based on these trials. Bone protection agents. You can either take denosumab or zolotonic acid. There was a trial which said the side effect profile regarding hypocalcemia, osteonecrosis, the onset of uh, both is same in both onset. But if the patient is having long term comorbidities, especially the renal comorbidities, preferably avoid zolotonic acid. Okay, thank you. So, any questions?
one patient is crpc should be continue editing no you, you can't correct this because if the patient is progressing on edit that itself is a crpc so even if you have created a castration by uh, add, adding uh, and uh, androgen deprivation therapy if the patient is still progressing that itself is called crpc so you can't add edit you should you can't continue the patient on edit you need to shift the patient on onto abiraterone docetaxel or enzalutamide if you can briefly discuss on the case scenarios oral gnrh analog so i have never used that i don't know briefly on the case scenarios okay let's go there any level of surgical castration definitely definitely it's very cost effective okay it's very cost effective i think something around 25 to 30000 rupees uh, based on where you operate of course but yes you can do it on uh, 25 to 30000 rupees but just imagine the psychological impact so yes it is uh, very cost effective frankly speaking but imagine the psychological impact on the patient okay that has to be taken into consideration if the patient wants to undergo uh, dental procedure on xylotronic acid uh, when the patient is on xylotronic dil- acid i won't recommend dental procedure tooth extraction dental procedures no you can't osteonecrosis risk is quite high okay so let's look at the case scenarios uh case scenario 1 PSA is 40. You need to repeat the PSA to understand whether it is a single spike or multiple spikes. Okay. Case scenario number two, you have uh, consecutive uh, increase in uh, PSA. That means it has already risen. So you need to do a workup, imaging workup, CT abdomen, pelvis, and bone scan. As I said, PSA and PET CT is not a uh, robust data as not come yet. uh carcinoma prostate post rt psa levels at 15 so what is the next step among these options as it is post radiation i will definitely recommend mri bone scan okay so why not biopsy in the second case so where do you want to do biopsy so, so unless you do an imaging so where do you want to do a biopsy it's a post op setting there is no lesion there yes the base is increasing but where do you want to do a biopsy if there is no lesion visible unless you do an imaging you can't know where is a lesion and you can't do a biopsy okay so okay so so rt in i think i have covered rt in okay metastatic crpc no no as of now no so we stop adt give rest of the drugs only in mrs mcrps yes yes that is the standard so post rt psa is elevated we compare to in this options yes compared to mri and bone see compared to ct abdomen and pelvis mri bone scan has more better chance of being the correct answer because as it is post rt there is a chance that it can fail locally also it's it there is a chance it can fail more locally so that is why i uh, said mri plus bone scan which will rule out local recurrence and the most common site of uh, spinal recurrence but yes uh, best answer should uh, will be mri bone scan and ct abdomen okay but why not uh, local for local visualization why don't why are not be going for trus uh what here is you are saying why not trus see trus alone will not give the entire information right the mri versus the trus definitely they are both good for local recurrence evaluation but any day mri plus bone scan will, will be a better answer than trus we uh, patient is not showing any symptoms regarding bone pain okay so still still we go for mri with bone scan uh 
it's an asymptomatic patient with no pain. So a patient doesn't have pain. That doesn't mean that there is no no bone metastasis, right? So you need to work up the patient in a proper way. So bone scan has to be done. Just because the patient doesn't have symptoms, that doesn't mean the patient has no bone metastasis. So you need to do a workup. Uh, is it clear? Should I uh, explain in deep in more deeper manner? Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay. So I I have no issue of uh, explaining in in detail. So no issues about that. We can discuss in detail. So regarding this, uh, third year it was diagnosed as biochemical recurrence, imaging negative. So you have a scenario where biochemical failure alone, where you can consider salvage RT. Okay. Scenario four, the answer is salvage radiation. Case scenario five, biochemical recurrence in the post RT setting, imaging was negative. That means only local recurrence has come. So you can uh, <clears throat> consider surgery with salvage prostatectomy. Should we treat a patient based on, oh yeah, this is a discussion. Case scenario number six, I think I, was, I, I spoke about this. Only spinal metastasis cannot be considered as uh, high volume disease. Back pain, see this, yes, lupronate plus abiratron. Case scenario number eight, if there is a uh, lupronate plus docetaxel, and uh, you have, uh, if there is an abiratron plus docetaxel, see, that situation, if it arises, my personal choice based on the side effect profile will be with, uh, to go with abiratron plus gluprolide. Uh, this was always already shown in uh, meta-analysis, stop meta-analysis, but still uh, my, per, my personal choice is abiratron. So I, if you ask me, sir, is there a randomized control trial suggesting why the, that choice? I can't say because that is the uh, choice which you, that is a, uh, decision you take based on side effect profile and the patient's compliance. Okay, then yes, this is uh, ADD plus uh, radiation to the single vertebra. Then we go to MCRTC. Case scenario number 11, uh, PS1 carcinoma prostate post RT, ADT for th three years. Now he came with follow up for uh, with PSA 25. So you have a single PSA for spike. So you need to uh, do a repetition of weekly PSA for two weeks, whether it is uh, so hiked or not. Of course, you do a bone scan. Of course, you would have seen the abdominal pelvis. So answer is all the above. Okay. Same patient, CRPC. So what is the best treatment? So best treatment, you have abiratron, docetaxel, and enzalutamide. Okay. So this, <clears throat> you need to, as I said before, you need to take into consideration the multiple side effect profile of the drugs, the patient's uh, general, general condition, and the tumor biology, then take a decision. Okay. That is the reason, next question, I <clears throat> gave the option of on any of the above. So any of the above is the answer. But you need to take a decision regarding the three drugs which the patient will get the maximum benefit. Okay. Next is uh, cardiomyopathy. So if there is a patient with cardiomyopathy which can be aggravated by either starting the patient on abiratron or docetaxel, I will definitely go with enzaltomyopathy. Metastatic carcinoma, prostate, ADT of six months, visceral metastasis. See, if <clears throat> you have a condition where castrate resistant prostate cancer and the patient has visceral metastasis, that means the patient has an aggressive disease. So, aggressive disease is always treated with chemotherapy in prostate. That I will go with docetaxel. Carcinoma prostate, ADT for two years, developed spinal metastasis, 
patient was treated with Abiraterone, progressed. Then the next is Docetaxel. You can argue for Cabazitaxel also, but both are correct. But I would say, as I said, as I explained before, keep uh, treat the patient with Docetaxel and then keep the uh, Cabazitaxel for third line. Uh, spinal meds initiated with docetaxel progression. In this patient, you need to take a decision regarding abiraterone, enzalutamide, or cabazitaxel. My personal choice, if the patient is has no history of seizures, <clears throat> sorry, no history of seizures, then I will definitely go with the patient with enzalutamide. See, all these questions, I, I agree there are a bit... Uh, not that great actually in scenarios, but what I wanted to uh, depict is regarding the combination of aberatron, uh, regarding the decision regarding uh, aberatron, enzalutamide, docetaxel. There is no data to say this is better, this, this is not good, not like that. Based on the side effect profile and patient's fitness, you need to take a decision. And tumor biology, of course. Osteolytic spinal metastasis diagnosed as CRPC. Patient is planned on docetaxel. In this patient, I will definitely uh, advise uh, or based on data, denosumab plus calcium plus vitamin D. Denosumab. But you should take into consideration the patient's general condition, not sorry, not general condition, the economic condition. As I said, for one year, it will cost around almost only the drug will cost around 2.5 lakh. And uh, zolotonic acid will cost you around per month 3,000 rupees. That is uh, 35,000, 36,000 rupees. Uh, this not taking into consideration the admission, the delivery charges. And uh, regarding the last question, yes, start the patient on high-dose steroids and assess for surgery. So these are the 20 questions. Okay, so what about PSMA PET CT? Sir? As I said, the data regarding PSMA PET CT is not robust yet to make it standard. Right now, yes, there are multiple guidelines which are coming up saying that you can consider PSMA PET CT, but till there is a meta analysis or still there is a randomized control trial, I will I would go with CT abdomen pelvis plus bone scan. Scenario nine, why not docetaxel? Scenario nine. Scenario nine. Long. Scenario nine. Why not dose attacks? I said I, I told you right. Stop the meta analysis, which said abiraterone is better than dose attacks. And uh, based on the side effect profile. As Abiraterone has less side effects, you have the only uh, <clears throat> overlap with uh, docetaxel is fluid accumulation. Fluid accumulation happens in Abiraterone plus docetaxel, and you have because of the fluid accumulation, you have more pressure on the heart. But if you take into consideration the bone marrow suppression, risk of febrile neutropenia, risk of peripheral neuropathy. I think Abiraterone will be a better option, better option compared to Rositex. And yes, uh, the point is uh, always Abiraterone is given with steroids. If you put the patient only on uh, Abiraterone rather than giving steroids, uh, combination steroids combination, the patient will definitely have high accumulation of fluid in the body, and there is literally no glucocorticoids. Uh, because of the block, sorry, there is a high uh, increase in glucocorticoids and metal corticoids. So, to prevent, to cancel that, you give the patient on, you, give the, you, you put the patient on prednisone to decrease the side effect profile. Always it is given. Sir, uh, in case of MRPT, uh, we, okay. we, uh, we cannot go for combination uh, therapies we, uh, or we have to prefer only one. Among docetaxel, abiraterone, and enzulatalamide? It is difficult to find a patient who can tolerate single 
uh, chemotherapy alone so imagine what happens if the patient is uh, started on docetaxel plus abiraterone or uh, enzalutamide okay so uh, yes uh, regarding the question you asked so what they did is uh, they actually tried to start the patient on in the peace trial they tried to start the patient on uh, radium plus abiraterone you can't even imagine the amount of 33% of patients had fractures that is a problem of combining two drugs 33% see and regarding the combination you have put the patient on adt for 3 years if the patient has treated on uh, radiation 3 years of hormone therapy then again then you start the patient on docetaxel plus again one more hormone therapy you have weakness you have more fluid overload and uh, continuation of hormone therapy so you have muscle weakness bone weakness and uh, to prevent that if you start the patient on denisumab that will become a triple therapy so imagine the side effects and imagine the load on the patient so if the patient has been diagnosed first time sir Directly, patient, uh, my point is, see, my point is, you MCRPC the patient has bone metastasis, so you have uh, you have to use a triple uh, modality, a triple. You plan to use triple treatment, so like docetaxel plus uh, abiraterone or docetaxel plus uh, enzalutamide plus bone protection agent. The patient can't tolerate. It's very 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 toxic combination. Okay. Okay. Twenty wine multiple meds. Why not EBRT plus steroids? The uh, yes, there is a multiple meds, but still there is a there is a patient has spinal cord compression in only one area. So when there is impending spinal cord compression, always yes yes. When there is impending spinal cord compression, always think about surgical opinion. Okay. If surgery is not possible, then yes, you can look at ABRT plus steroids. Okay, impending spinal cord. The word impending is very important there. Okay, any role of hormone therapy in post-op recurrence? Post-op recurrence. I think we have discussed this point last time. Uh, post-op hormone therapy alone, no. But post-op Radiation plus hormone therapy. There is, as of now, there is data regarding that. You can uh, put the patient on salvage radiation plus either six months of GnRH or, or uh, bicarbonate. Do we combine enzalutamide and abiraterone? No. No. Two hormone therapies. What do you want to achieve? And why do you want to do that? Two hormone therapies you cause significant damage to the muscle and the bone. If only local recurrence, only local recurrence gives salvage RT plus hormone therapy. This is one of the case scenario. And I, I actually wanted to talk about the oncology forum also. See, I agree. You have lot of classes, lot of uh, um, stuff to read. But my request is only one thing. See, there is no point in hearing to multiple classes. You keep listening to this class. Next tomorrow, one more class. You can't read what you have listened. There is no point in taking multiple classes. Yeah, we have multiple uh, faculty who can take classes. Okay, so one you you keep listening to classes. When do you get the time to read? Okay, my my request is, please don't attend multiple classes. Weekly three or four classes are more than enough. And the remaining time, I hope you uh, spend time regarding uh, uh, spend time reading. That will be my only request to you people. Okay, that is why we are not uh, planning more classes. From now on, okay. And one more thing is, see, uh, this presentation took me two weeks, okay, to read and everything. So 
my point is i want people to read and people to present okay so everyone should present i want general clubs i want case presentations see it it should not be only one way that is the reason i wanted this discussion to have two ways at one point of time we will run out of faculty to teach okay then someone has to take lead role and they have to take they have to present so i want people to do general clubs i want people to present cases so that will be beneficial for you and me really for for everyone not me everyone because I, even i can learn new things but i my request is take time to read and start presentation either general clubs topics or case presentations up to you okay i hope you all you enjoyed the class and you learned something from it okay so i'll take my leave thank you for listening thank you thank you so much sir